to go into San Antonio and, and to win without Kevin Durant, to win after being down 15 points in the first quarter against a team that is two days removed, really, from you know just pulverizing the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, I think that was a pretty big statement win, uh, you know, for Golden State to do that. And and look, it's confidence boosting. I know this team has won a championship and been to back to back finals, but everyone's talking about San Antonio kind of lurking out there as the boogeyman. And San Antonio has played extremely well against Golden State this season. To finish the year with a win against the Spurs, I think it's going to help this team as they go into a potential conference finals matchup. And possibly Durant coming back here soon. How about uh, in the East where Cleveland no longer on top, uh, Boston overtook them, um, and it hadn't happened for, what, two years or so there. So uh, can the Cavs flip the switch? Is uh, Boston a legit concern for them? You know, I think Boston's a concern. Uh but I think Toronto's a bigger concern right now. Obviously, the biggest concern is getting it right internally. I mean, their defense has been deplorable over the last uh, last month or so. And, you know, offensively, they're playing a lot of isolation-heavy basketball they need to fix. But, you know, they're, they're a team that's flicked the switch when they got to the playoffs before. And, you know, there's really no reason to believe they can't do it again. But they're going to have to because they can't sort of, you know, uh, be 75% of what they uh, – what they want to be in that in that second round because once they get to the second round, whether it's Boston, Cleveland, or Boston, Washington, or Toronto, it is going to be a street fight against one of those teams. And and it, it wasn't like that the last couple of years. And that's something they have to be prepared for. I think they are prepared for uh, going into this playoffs. And Chris, it seems like it wasn't something that they thought they were going to have to prepare for maybe a month or two ago. No, uh, well, I mean, look, I, I, I do think that they always understood that the way the Eastern Conference has evolved, it's going to be a tough path. I mean, Toronto, you know, at the trade deadline, they got Serge Ibaka, and Serge Ibaka makes them so much more dangerous on the defensive side of the floor. If you look at the numbers post-Ibaka trade, the Raptors have incrementally improved uh, every single uh, every single week uh, with Ibaka on the team. And, and Boston, you know, they get better with their young players, and Washington's done a complete 180 from what they were last year. This didn't go unnoticed uh, by the Cavaliers. They've just long believed that if they got their stuff right, they were going to be okay. Right now, they don't have it there, but they still believe that they'll be able to get right by the playoffs. Uh, Chris Mannix with us here, talking NBA. Uh, rumors of a potential Sam Henke return. The irony would be the Kings could be interested. Do you see Sam back in the NBA, and particularly with the Kings next season? Yeah, I think Sam will get back into the NBA eventually. Now, as far as the Kings go, it, it all depends on what kind of job that they're offering him. I mean, the Kings in the past have offered executives sort of a, a, a understudy role to Vlade Divac, uh, a role that's basically become a glorified capologist. And that's why you haven't seen many executives show any interest in going there. Now there has been reports and there, these are reports, I believe that, you know, they're looking to put somebody over a Vlade Divac and make that person in charge of all personnel decisions. If that is the role, I think Sam Hankey would be very interested. I think, that Sam uh, you know, should feel validated by some of the things that's gone on in Philadelphia this year, the way this kind of young team has looked in spurts. Uh, and I think he's eager for another opportunity. I mean, I, and I, I also don't think that Sam Hankey would make the same mistakes he made in Philly. He's a very smart guy. I think he's learned from his errors. and I think he'll be a better GM for it. The question is just going to be, what kind of role will Sacramento offer him? He won't go there if he has to answer to Vlade Divac. He will if Vlade answers to him. Yeah, many people, when this topic comes up here locally, have wondered whether or not he could do things the same way in terms of being very egregious about things that other teams may have also be on to him and be unwilling to deal with him as much. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's some truth to that, I think. Um, you know, and, and it's been such a, a, a tumultuous few years, you know, for a guy – uh, like Sam Henke. But again, I, I think Sam is going to be so much better this next time around. I mean, he's a very smart guy. I think he's learned from his errors. and I think he'll be a better GM for it. The question is just going to be, what kind of role will Sacramento offer him? He won't go there if he has to answer to Vlade Divac. He will if Vlade answers to him. Yeah, many people, when this topic comes up here locally, have wondered whether or not he could do things the same way in terms of being very egregious about things that other teams may have also be on to him and be unwilling to deal with him as much. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's some truth to that, I think. Um, 
you know, and, and it's been such a, a, a tumultuous few years, you know, for a guy uh, like Sam Henke. But again, I, I think Sam is going to be so much better this next time around. I mean, you know, the things he, he screwed up on, the simple things, the, like, you know, not going out and trying to get a guy like Ish Smith a year ago when Ish Smith wasn't going to help you win games, but he was going to help you be a more respectable team. That's the type of move that I think Sam Henke would be more inclined to make. He wouldn't just gut a team. He wouldn't be adversarial to people within his own organization. I think whoever gets Sam Henke again is going to get a very good executive. Chris Maddox from The Vertical, talking NBA, NBC Sports Radio. Uh, Chris, uh, you tweeted last night two things that I found kind of interesting. One uh, was about uh, Malcolm Brogdon and the second-round pick and a uh, possible Rookie of the Year candidate. Do you think uh, it is a Philadelphia player, or does Brogdon have a legitimate shot? No, I think Brogdon's got a legitimate shot. I mean, that's a playoff team that he's playing on right now. That's a team that went into Boston last night, uh, you know, one of the hottest teams in the NBA, and won largely because of what he did in the final 60 seconds of that game. And it just, you know, I, I tweet that because it's a reminder that nobody should believe, you know, rhetoric that comes from teams that second-round picks are so hard to hit on and, and, and they don't have great value. That's just, that's just nonsense. You know, it, it takes work to identify a Malcolm Brogdon. It takes work to identify a Nikola Jokic or any of these other guys that have been second-round picks that have panned out. Draymond Green, another example. You have to put the work in, uh, put the miles in flying around the globe trying to find these guys. They're there every single year. There's two or three players in the second round that turn out to be you know, either role players or better in the NBA. And Brogdon's just that type of guy. And, and I, I think that you know, teams have to work even harder to identify those types of players. Uh, how about Miami? Uh, you tweeted about them, how they just keep coming at you. That's a team that really you would think has no business being uh, a playoff team. Now, I know the, the East is a little light, but uh, just Spolster, the job he's done, maybe a coach of the year. Yeah, I mean, he's he's up there. I mean, I think Mike D'Antoni's probably going to win coach of the year. But, you know, I would say that this is Eric Spolster's finest coaching job to date, uh, you know, with the Heat. And that includes – his championship season. I mean, Miami is just so undermanned. I mean, they were 11 and 30 in mid January, and many other teams in that position would have just shut it down, would have said, Look, we could use a top draft pick. We're going to, you know, go under the guise of, of developing young players, and we're going to tank away the rest of the season. Uh, the Heat didn't do that. They continue to focus on player development. They've continued to, to believe that they can win these close games, and they are very, very good when they lead a team in the fourth quarter, something like 28-3 and three or some, some crazy number. They're just, uh, they're just a good team. They really are. And, and they want it more than any of those teams in the back of the Eastern Conference playoff bracket. Will they get it? I don't know. They know they're in for a dogfight down there. But the Heat, they're, they're as, as, as hungry and as tough-minded as any team out there. Okay, NBA playoffs uh, set to start in a couple of weeks here. Chris Maddox from The Vertical, host of The Chris Maddox Show, weekday afternoons on NBC Sports Radio, the 24-hour Sports Talk Network. Download the app, subscribe to The Maddox Podcast. Chris, take care, pal. You got it, anytime.